Hello, this is Dr. Oviedo. Today, we are going to review multiple cases of oral cancer, salivary gland lesions, and nasopharyngeal lesions. The first case is normal tongue. This is reviewed in a separate video. The second slide is normal buccal mucosa. The normal buccal mucosa is up here, and the skin is down here. This is reviewed in the same video as the tongue. The third slide is normal parotid gland. This is reviewed in a separate video. Case one is oral squamous cell carcinoma. You can see in this picture, the top of the tongue is up here. This here is the edge of the mouth, and there is obviously a tumor right here. This lesion from here to here is an ulcer on top of the tumor. This is a biopsy of the tumor. You can see there's three pieces of tissue. I'm gonna take a closer look at this one on the bottom left. There is a small bit of normal stratified squamous epithelium right here. This is keratinizing. You can see because it is darker pink right here. The rest of this biopsy is composed of squamous cell carcinoma. I'm going to take a closer look right here. You can see these cells have centrally placed nuclei right here and right here with moderate amounts of pink cytoplasm. You can also see that the cell borders are easily visualized. In addition, some of the cells, for example, right here, right here, right here, and right here have a darker pink appearance. This is keratinization throughout the tumor as opposed to just on the surface. The word we use to describe this process is dyskeratosis, and these are dyskeratotic cells. This is a feature of squamous cell carcinoma. This round structure down here is called a squamous pearl. This is another feature of abnormal keratinization seen in squamous cell carcinoma. In this field, you can see a mitotic figure right here and right here. There are a fair number of mitotic figures if you look around. So this is a mitotically active tumor with dyskeratosis and squamous pearls. This is the appearance of squamous cell carcinoma. Let's go on to the next case. For case two, you're going to have to copy and paste the link from the study guide. You are going to have to install Adobe Flash Player to view this slide. Case 2 is Sjogren's Syndrome. At this power, you can see there is a mucosal surface right here. This is non-keratinizing stratified squamous epithelium, which is the normal epithelium for the inside of the lower lip. The rest of this biopsy is composed of salivary gland. Even at low power, you can see there is a lot of inflammation in the salivary gland tissue. Let's take a closer look. At this power, you can see there are a lot of lymphocytes in and around the asini. For example, here, 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 and here. You will recall that the normal parotid gland you already reviewed consists of tightly packed asini with no inflammation. The appearance of this biopsy here is that of Sjogren's syndrome. Please note there is additional information regarding Sjogren's syndrome in the lecture video. Let's go on to our next case. Case three is a mucosil. You can see the mucosil right here. It is a smooth surfaced cystic mass. Let's go on to the histology. You can see there are three pieces of tissue. The center piece demonstrates a cystic mass filled with mucin. Let's take a look at the lining. At this power, you can see there are a few inflammatory cells in the lining, and there are a lot of macrophages here, and there is mucin here on the right. This is the appearance of a mucosil. Let's go on to the next case. Case 4 is pleomorphic adenoma. Here is our gross picture. You can see this is a sharply demarcated tumor. There is some normal adipose here on the left. Let's go on to the histology. You can see this is the tumor. 
Here on the right, there is some normal parotid gland with adipose. Let's take a closer look at the tumor. At this power, you can see there are numerous groups of epithelial cells. I can tell they are epithelial cells because they are grouped together. This area here shows spindled cells in a myxoid background. This pale bluish appearance in the background is what we call myxoid. These spindled cells are myoepithelial cells. This area right here looks like cartilage, so we call these chondroid cells. The presence of these three different types of histology is very characteristic of pleomorphic adenoma. You will recall from the lecture that pleomorphic adenoma has a PLAG1 gene rearrangement. Let's go on to the next case. Case 5 is Warthin tumor. This is the same as papillary cystadenoma lymphomatosum. You can see the tumor right here, which is surrounded by parotid gland here with some adipose. At this power, you can see this tumor has a papillary pattern. I am going over the papillary pattern with my cursor. At this power, you can see the tumor has a double layer of epithelium. There is a layer of nuclei right here and then another layer right here. In addition, the cytoplasm has a very pink appearance. It also has kind of a granular appearance. The granular appearance is best seen in the microscope and you may not be able to see that very well on a digital slide. The pink granular appearance is what we call oncocytic. This appearance is generally due to tumor cells that are filled with large amounts of mitochondria. You can see that underneath the epithelium, there are a lot of lymphocytes. These are what we call reactive lymphocytes. Even though they are considered very characteristic of the tumor, they are not neoplastic. The epithelium is considered the neoplastic portion of Warthin tumor. Okay, let's go on to our next case. Case 6 is mucoepidermoid carcinoma. Here on the right, there is stratified squamous epithelium. You can see there are cystic areas here, here, and here. Here on the right, the tumor is more solid. At this power, you can see the cysts are lined by mucus secreting epithelium. Here in the solid area, you can see the appearance of squamous cells with centrally placed nuclei, moderate amounts of pink cytoplasm, and visible cell borders. This particular cell down here has a large mucin droplet. This is the appearance of mucoepidermoid carcinoma. You will recall from the lecture that approximately half of mucoepidermoid carcinomas will have an 1119 translocation with a MECT1 MAML2 fusion. Let's go on to our next case. Case 7 is nasopharyngeal carcinoma. This is an axial CT scan. Let's take a look at normal structures first. Up here is the nose. This is the nasal septum. This black area right here is the maxillary sinus. This back here is the cerebellum, and this white area right here is the skull. This lesion right here is the nasopharyngeal carcinoma located in the posterior nasopharynx. Let's go on to the histology. There are two pieces of tissue. Let's take a look at the one on the left. The tumor is composed of moderately pleomorphic nuclei with pink cytoplasm. Pleomorphic means the nuclei have a variable appearance. You can see there is a moderate variation in the appearance of the nuclei. In addition, we really can't see the cell borders very well the way we could in the case of oral squamous cell carcinoma. The word synchytium is used to describe this appearance. Also, because the cell borders are difficult to see, we call this 
undifferentiated. There are also a fair number of benign lymphocytes. You can see some right here. This is the appearance of nasopharyngeal carcinoma undifferentiated. Let's go on to the next slide, which also belongs to this case. This is a photograph of an in situ hybridization for Epstein-Barr virus. You cannot magnify the slide because it is a photograph. These dark purplish round bodies are nuclei which have been hybridized with molecular probes for Epstein-Barr virus sequence. The probes are linked to a chromogen, which simply means it will give a color so that we can see it under the microscope. This is, of course, positive for EBV. If it were negative, it would just have this pale pink color here on the right. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma is, of course, an EBV-associated tumor. Let's go on to the next case. Case 8 is nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. Let's take a look at the T2 MRI. This up here is the nose, this is the nasal septum, this is the maxillary sinus, this is the cerebellum back here. You can see the tumor located right here. It is located in the posterior nasal cavity. Let's go on to the histology. This entire slide is composed of the lesion. Let's look at it higher power. You can see there are a lot of irregularly shaped blood vessels. There's one here, another one here, and another one right here. At this power, you can see there are round to ovoid nuclei, which are fibroblasts, and a pink wavy background. This pink wavy material is collagen. So we say there is a collagenous stroma. This is the appearance of nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. Let's go on to the next case. Case nine is a nasal polyp. You can see the nose right here. This is the nasal septum and this is the maxillary sinus. The nasal polyp, of course, is right here. Let's go on to the histology. You can see this lesion has a polypoid shape. There is a respiratory epithelial lining up here. Let's take a look at the lining. At this power, you can see the cilia up here and here. You can also see the pseudostratified nuclei down here. This right here is a mucus secreting cell. This is the appearance of respiratory epithelium. Let's take a look at the underlying tissue. In this particular field, you can see these cells right here are eosinophils. If you spend some time looking at the slide, you will see there are a lot of eosinophils, which is commonly seen in nasal polyp. Other types of inflammatory cells are also present. This is the appearance of a nasal polyp. Okay, let's go on to our summary slides. The first slide is normal tongue and is reviewed in a separate video. The second slide is normal buccal mucosa and is reviewed in the same video as the tongue. The third slide is normal parotid gland and is reviewed in a separate video. Case one is oral squamous cell carcinoma. Here is our gross picture. You can see the arrows pointing to a mass on the side of the tongue. There is also a small ulcer on top of the lesion. Here on the right, you can see the squamous cell carcinoma with the squamous pearl and dyskeratotic cells here and here. Case two is Sjogren's syndrome. Here is our biopsy. At high power, you can see the salivary gland has a marked lymphocytic inflammation. Case three is mucosil. Here is a gross picture of the mucosil. On histology, there is a cystic lesion filled with mucus. High power demonstrates the cyst is lined with inflammation towards the mucus. Case four is pleomorphic adenoma. The gross picture demonstrates a sharply demarcated tumor. 
Here you can see the whole mount demonstrates the tumor on the left and the normal parotid gland on the right. The tumor is composed of epithelial cells, myoepithelial cells with a myxoid background, and chondroid cells. Pleomorphic adenoma generally has PLAG1 gene rearrangement. Case 5 is Warthin tumor, which is the same as papillary cystadenoma lymphomatosum. Here is our whole mount. You can see the mid power shows the papillary pattern. On the right, you can see the oncocytic epithelium and the reactive lymphoid stroma. Case 6 is mucoepidermoid carcinoma. Here is our whole mount. The mid power demonstrates the cystic and solid patterns. Here is the cystic region, and here is the more solid region. On higher power, you can see here is a mucin secreting cell, and here is a squamous cell. Approximately half of mucoepidermoid carcinomas have an 11 19 translocation, which creates a MECT1 mammal 2 fusion. Case 7 is nasopharyngeal carcinoma, undifferentiated type. Here is our CT scan. You can see the large nasopharyngeal carcinoma in the posterior nasopharynx. On histology, you can see the carcinoma cells and the benign lymphocytes in the background. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma is positive for Epstein-Barr virus. Case 8 is nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. Here is our CT scan. You can see the nasopharyngeal angiofibroma in the posterior nasal cavity. Here on the right, you can see the abnormal blood vessels and the fibroblasts which produce the collagen. Case 9 is a nasal polyp. Here is the CT scan and here is the nasal polyp. On histology, you can see there is a respiratory epithelial lining and a fair amount of inflammatory cells in the underlying stroma. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed learning about all these different lesions.